Hello lovelies, how are you? How has the week been? What have you been up to? Anything you have done that has enhanced your image to be absolutely successful? Well, thank you so much for those who did something and for those that haven't yet, it's fine. That's why we're here to learn how to obtain the absolute success image. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening from wherever you're watching. My name is Loi Kwagala and I am your absolute success image expert. Founder of Lois Coaching Class, where you need to go and like the page on Facebook for consistent learning. Now, today I was listening to a podcast and I just got something that was actually attached to the message that I bring to you today. And what is that? Most of us talk about confidence. I am confident. You know, self-confidence is very important. Believe in yourself. Those are nice words, isn't it? And they boost us to make us feel better. But guess what? Do you know where confidence comes from? Let's take it that. In terms of our image subject, confidence is on the outward image, right? It's on the outside. You exhibit it. You show it. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you look at people, the way you do things exhibits confidence. That is on the outside. Now, do you know the internal part of confidence? You got it. The internal part of confidence is integrity. I know, right? It is integrity. Integrity is the guarantee for you to achieve all your other principles and set goals and aspirations. If you say that I want to be a puncture person, I want to be, you know, I'm an early person in the morning, you wake up early, an early morning person, I want to be reading consistently at least one chapter a day, I want to, you know, perform well, all those goals that you set, tell me who guarantees them integrity because integrity comes with consistency integrity comes with character building okay it is the glue that binds those principles together for you to get the character and outwardly you will exhibit confidence so learn that if you want to be more confident if you already are and if you think it's an area in your life that you need to resurrect and improve then you need to have integrity integrity is on the outward until we do and exhibit things on the outside, we can never know that we have integrity. It comes from within us. Now, that was a nice breaker for me to share what I learned today. Today's lesson is about three things among so many that are the enemies to obtaining your absolute success image. In life, there is a card and a cane. So the card is the absolute success image. The cane are the three things that we're going to see, which are always, you know, coming to hit back and hit back on our carrot, which we want to try and eat and enjoy to be more nourished. First one is self-pity. Self-pity is such a very, very, very strong trait. Self-pity causes us to worry. Self-pity brings depression. Someone would be wondering, Loi, what is self-pity? Self-pity is a state of emotion or mind where one feels sorry for oneself. <laughs> oh, why me? I wish that I had better opportunities than the other person. If only that was mine. Why is it that bad things happen to me only? I can never be better than this. You know, life is never fair. Those are some of the results, the outward expressions of self-pity. Once you start cultivating self-pity, there is no way you're, you're not going to have a low self-esteem. There is no way. That confidence we were talking about earlier, you're going to bury it so deep that you might never even remember it is something you can have or even have within you. Self-pity scatters every good resource, including human resource, around you. Nobody wants to live around, oh, I wish, what if, no. When you are pitying yourself, you're going to have a low self-esteem. What happens? You're going to run into a depression. You're going to be on your own. You will hate everybody, even those that will come to help you. You're going to look at them like they're the enemies of your future, yet you are your own enemy. What happens when, some, when people are really depressed? It's a mental state. You can go cuckoo, 
crazy completely. You end up in a mental hospital. You can even alternatively end up being suicidal. What happens? You might kill your internal part, kill your success, kill your knowledge, kill your achievements, kill your education, kill your professional life, kill your family, kill everything. If not, you physically dying completely. It starts as an inward thing, but ends up as an external thing. That's why in this class I always say that we need to mind our image from the inside out. Mind everything you do from the inside out. That word you speak, it came from inside. What did it do to you or within you before you said it? So before someone expresses self-pity, before someone commits suicide, before someone really runs into a depression and starts taking antidepressants and looking for psychiatrists and, and, and trauma you know, experts and counselors and everyone to help them, it has been going on on the inward part for a long time that we can never fathom. So what do you do in order for you not to end up in self-pity. What is the opposite of self-pity? Tell me somebody. How would you not pity yourself? Be grateful. That's it. Gratitude is a solution to so many life and emotional situations. So many. Instead of saying, why do bad things happen to me? Go ahead and say, I am the only one who can manage this and take on this challenge. God, why me? No. Thank you, God, because you're giving me the courage and the strength and the grace to overcome this. I wish that was mine. No. Better is yet to come. My one is better. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, life. Thank you, my boss. Thank you, my parents. Thank you, family. Thank you, friends. Be grateful. Look within you and find those powerhouse abilities and thank God for them. Thank you also for everything you do. Lord, thank you for the day. Today you did an amazing job, honey. You, you, you're the best woman in this world. I mean, you are. Mm. And then Loy will be like that. When will she ever have time to be like, oh, Loy, you see everybody else is moving forward and you're not. No. She knows that we're not equal. We're not the same. She might be here today and you are here. But tomorrow she's going to be here and then eventually be here. Maybe you will be here at that point. So no need. Self-pity is an enemy to you obtaining your absolute success image. So be grateful instead. Number two, complaining and grumbling. There's a famous story in the Bible about the children of Israel. They were meant to go to the promised land in days. They spent years. So what is your promised land in your life? At what age were you supposed to obtain your, I mean, be in your promised land or obtain your absolute success image? But you're meandering on the mountain so long and spending years and years and years. Yet your promised land was supposed to be in days. Your journey to you obtaining your absolute success image meant to be in days, in hours. But because of complaining and grumbling, you always look for who to tell the bad news next. Always. You know why people don't look for advice or what? Because they think they're going to be judged or criticized. But not all criticism needs to be negative. For some of us, especially in the professions that we do, I'm talking to myself right now as well, it doesn't have to be negative all the time. And why should it even be negative all the time? It shouldn't be. If somebody comes complaining and grumbling, life is bad, you know, at my age, every woman has this, every you know, girl has that, the people I studied with are there. At my office, every person is like that. You know, the other one's boyfriend or husband does that. Complaining and grumbling. What is your role? Your role is to tell them, hey, look here, sober up. You are not them, and they're not you. He's not yours. <laughs> So you cannot count another person's blessing on your side. No, it's theirs. The day you wake up and appreciate that, you will stop complaining. Wish more for yourself. In one of my videos where I talk about the image of an ambitious person, want more for yourself. Look at everything as, mm-mm, that's too small. But also do that when you're doing something about it. Understand your times and seasons. You won't complain, you won't grumble. Understand how 
what you have can be used, leverage on it. If you have only 10,000 shillings, how can you use it to make a million shillings probably by the end of the year? Jesus asked a simple question, what do you have? What's that you have? And this little boy said, I have two fish and five loaves. He said, bring it. Two fish, ladies and gentlemen, and five loaves. Fed thousands, 5,000 men. No women counted, no children counted. Two fish, five loaves. He just took it and lifted it up and told his father to bless it. He multiplied it and he served it. Don't complain. Let me tell you what to do. Whatever little you have, you want to start a business, you only have 10,000. You want to have a family and you only have yourself, meaning you need a husband, you need children, you need a home, right? To start a family. You want to have your ceremonies, no money. School, there's no school fees or there's too little, not enough to, you know, even enroll, pay your registration fees. What is that in your life that you want to achieve? For you to get into your Canaan or to obtain your absolute success image in everything that you do. Get that thing, however little, however big. Lift it up, you know, before the Lord with your own hands. Your hands are blessed, right? Lift it up and just say, God, you created me. At least I have a blessing as your creature. Yes, you are entitled to it. It's God's responsibility to make sure that you survive your well. So take that. If you don't have the other one, the Abrahamic blessing and the Jesus blessing, Take that one of being a creature of God and tell him, God, I'm your responsibility. So I only have 20,000 shillings. I only have 200,000 shillings. I only have five tomatoes. I only have, you know, a home. I only have one job. Can you please take it and bless it and multiply it and give it back to me, shaken together, overflowing, that I may benefit. Think about it. Uh, where, where is God's benefit? I told you he's a businessman. He multiplied the other two fish and five loaves to feed thousands of people. So you, why are you asking for that multiplication? Don't, don't make it for you. Remember we said that an ambitious person who wants to have an absolute success image thinks beyond themselves. They don't have a me syndrome. So ask God to multiply it for you to benefit other people. It will be too much for you to contain on your own. So complaining and grumbling, you only have to take what you have, love it, appreciate it, Thank God for it. Give it back to him and ask him to bless it, multiply it, restore it unto you, shaken together and overflowing. When it flows away from you, it will go and keep multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. Okay? So that is how we are going to come against complaining. Complaining and grumbling are enemies of success in any way, in any form. Do not be the one that influences your friends negatively. Don't always look for people to share bad news. There's a solution right there. Lift that bad news. I know we always get to those points. But when you practice, like I said, practice and learn and unlearn to relearn, then you will cultivate better habits. Now that you know through this lesson, I believe that your life is going to be, the, uh, going to be different. And so is mine. Every time I told you I stand here and I say these things to you, I teach you these things, I am telling myself as well, I am recapping and I'm holding myself even more accountable to everything that I tell you. So the final thing among us so many, number three that I chose is despair. Despair is an enemy to one's obtaining their absolute success image. When you are desperate in life, you're going to fall for everything and anything. What does that mean? You want a shirt, I want a red blouse. You're going to run and buy any. One that fits you, one doesn't fit you. One does that is, no, it's not a uh, clean one that is dirty. One that is oversized, one that is, you know, all those things. Really, either very super expensive, you can't afford it. Something. When you understand your need, you need to calm down. It's very important. You need to calm down. Say, okay, Loy, you need a Lamborghini. Wonderful, amazing. Then we start to break it down. How badly do you need it? I give myself three years to afford a Lamborghini. Maybe even by then the roads in Uganda will be better for me to drive my Lamborghini and I will have affected the world without apologizing. So I will drive it on Kampala Road without saying sorry to anybody because I have done my part. Now, am I gonna steal from the bank? 
Am I going to rob you, people? Am I going to do anything creepy because I'm desperately wanting to be seen driving a Lamborghini or fulfill my dream of driving a Lamborghini? No. So once I see that I have a need to have a Lamborghini, whatever your car preference is or anything you want, then I have to break it down to the steps. Okay? So if I have three years to drive it, then I break it down to the steps. Okay, uh, what are you going to do right now to make sure that you have the amount? First of all, how much does it cost you? Now it costs this much. In three years, it will cost this much. Okay, so we put that down. Insurance, you know, gas, everything. Put everything that concerns it down and then work towards achieving it in that particular time. When you stay hyper in your need, you're going to look for desperate solutions and measures. And there will be people to give them to you, by the way. But believe me, in a second, you will sober up and hate everything. Either you will have used your body, you will have been abused emotionally or mentally, and you will live with that bruise for the rest of your life. Don't be desperate. Wealth and success do not uh, pursue or do not follow desperate people. No. You don't have to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to pursue money today. I have to, you know, pursue success today. I have to, this year I have to pursue success. No. It's going to run away from you. The money is going to run away from you. Remember we started. Integrity is the guarantee to seal all your principles and life values together for you to be able to achieve them confidently. Now, this is what you're going to do. The last thing I'm going to tell us today. You're working towards success. You're working toward uh, obtaining your absolute success image. You're working toward wealth. Yeah? You're working toward creating an impact in the world. This is what we're going to do. What is that that you know how to do already? Consistently do that thing. Let me tell you the man, I always talk about him, who invented the, the light bulb, is not here today to benefit from it, but we're here today to benefit from it. He did not desperately want to, you know, let me put it there so that I'm famous and what. He's not here to be famous the way you would be like when you are alive. I don't know if you understand what I mean. But he's here to be famous through us who are benefiting from that. He did not pursue that fame. No. He did not pursue the success. No. He pursued the solution. The scientist in him pursued science. So what is it that is in you that you want to start pursuing successfully? Because you have control over it. You know it. Do you have control over wealth? Do you know how the currency of a dollar is going to be tomorrow? Do you know how the United States economy is going to be tomorrow? Uganda's economy per se, the country where you are. Do you know the status of your job or organization tomorrow? You don't. You don't have control over it. So why do you pursue it? Seek what is within you that you can control. That which you can wake up and write a to-do list for. That which you know you can measure in terms of quality and quantity. That's how. So... Pursue what you have. Find it. What is that that I have within me? Hold on to it. Develop an integrity for that. Create habits for it, objectives, goals. You know, how far do I want to go? Then start to push yourself. Cultivate a character in that. That thing, whether it's professional or a, a, a talent, is going to drive and bring success along and wealth along and good company along and every nice thing you've ever imagined will follow you. It's not ahead of you for you to pursue. Mm -mm. It's right beside you and behind you to come with you. So are you going to turn and walk backwards because success is coming behind me? No, you've got to keep moving forward as it keeps coming and encouraging you and sharing you on and saying, hey, yeah, hello, you got it. Anne, you got it. John, you got it. Julianne, you got it. You know, Jackie, you got it. Esther, you got it. You know, uh, Paul, you got it. Peter, you got it. It will come running after you. And it will gather up every good person that you need. They're there. It will gather up every nice thing you want. But because you're going somewhere. The enemies of obtaining the absolute success image are inward. Mostly. Stop blaming people for what happens to you. Don't blame shift. Hold yourself accountable every time, okay? Don't pity yourself. Mm -mm. Be grateful. Stop complaining and grumbling. And the last thing, don't be desperate. 
be on top of it, yeah? Be on top of it. But have a plan where you're going. Be on top of your needs. When you realize them, come down and sketch a plan for them. You have the solution within you, and God will help you to achieve it. He'll bring people in your life that will help you to lift you up and make sure that you become the woman and man he meant to be to obtain your absolute success image. And why not? I am right here. Lois Coaching Class is right here. So subscribe to this, this channel, like the video, comment. I'm always grateful to know the testimonies. Send questions through. For those of you that want to follow me on social media, yes, use Lois Kwagala on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Then Lois Coaching Class on Facebook, where we have more lessons and more learning and more education. Today, that is where we will stop. I appreciate you so much for being here every week and sharing with your friends and networks. When you learn something, please share with another person. It's not about maybe she wants likes or what. No, I do this for me to learn more from you. So you also want to do this to learn more from me by teaching another and also learning from yourself as well. Because when you send out this video, you attach your own message, isn't it? I learned this part. This is my, my most interesting part. I didn't know this was like that. Or maybe you even contend with what I was saying. That's entirely up to you because these are my opinions and it's my knowledge and experience that I, I share with you every week. So don't sit on it. Give it out like you're giving, okay? All right. God bless you and stay safe and healthy. Share us for now and see you next week. Bye.